So, we have a 2010 5.4 3-valve out here. It's been to multiple other shops. The last shop had it for about three weeks and the customer finally got tired of it and said, you know what, I'm done with it. Give me my truck back. I'm gonna take it to somebody else. I'm just gonna take it to the dealer. He says that they ended up uh, putting a fuel pump driver module in it. That didn't fix the problem. Then they rewired some of the wires going to it. That didn't fix the problem. And then they put a fuel pump in it. And it's still start, crank, nothing. Start, crank, nothing. Start, crank, nothing. And then all of a sudden, fourth, fifth time, it'll start to sputter. Fifth, sixth time, it'll start to sputter and it'll catch itself and then it'll run. Well, I hooked the fuel gauge up to the fuel rail. And let's key on real quick and then we'll see. I'm going to see if I can situate you here. I'll key on and then I'll turn it off. See if I can get this to a spot where it'll stay. Anyway, let me just key on and then come back and we'll look at the gauge, the fuel pressure gauge. Off, on, I hear the fuel pump running just shut off and it just drops like crazy it'll go from 60 all the way down and it'll just fall 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 the reason I pulled the fuel rail up is because these 543 valves were known for leaky injectors and I got through I'm looking at the fuel rail all the way down I don't see any injectors pissing fuel out because you should clearly see it with that kind of drop look it's all the way down to below 40 right now then I come over here and I'm looking at the passenger side fuel rail, looking at all the injectors. I don't see nothing leaking out of those. The only other thing that could be the culprit would be the fuel pump. The actual check valve in the pump is probably bad. It's able to sustain pressure once you get it to start hitting a little bit. And then all of a sudden it'll, fifth or sixth time, it'll boom and it'll start right up and it'll stay running. But once you go cold again and that check valve is trying to seed or it's supposed to be seeding, nope, no good. It takes about five or six times to get it started and running. So a uh, new Ford fuel pump for it is about a day out. It's $405, the customer price. And then the O-ring is like, I don't know, six, seven bucks for the top of it. And then you got another $25 for that upper locking ring if the locking ring on this tank is rotted out, which this truck is actually in pretty decent shape, so I wouldn't suspect the ring be you know leaking. So the customer's probably looking somewhere about $550 in parts. And then it's like a three to three and a half hour job to pull the tank, pull the pump and everything out, pull drive shaft out of the way. And um, you got about an hour to an hour and a half diag tied up into it. And it looks like a bad pump that was put in to begin with. So uh, a lot of people tell me all the time, oh, you know, they, they try to run us texts against each other. I, I just tell you like it is the way I see it. I tell you when it comes from another dealer, I tell you when it comes from another independent shop. Every single video, that's what I explain to you guys on how things are going. And this came from two other independent shops. And I'm not saying the guys don't know what they're doing, because they do, they're actually really good. I've reached out to them on vehicles I'm not familiar with, my buddies that work at independent shops, and they're great, they're a wealth of knowledge, but so are dealer techs. Stuff like this, a lot of people drop the ball on. They don't realize the quirks of the manufacturer, fuel injectors and rails and everything else, like a dealer tech that has seen it over and over and over again and already has the tools on hand to do it quickly. And I'm not saying independent techs don't have this, but this just so happened the last couple jobs I've had have come from independent shops. I know it's just a coincidence and I don't play techs against each other, but I tell you these things and I'm honest with you about these things to show you that everybody makes mistakes and I don't wholeheartedly believe one side of the field is better than the other. We're just all doing a job trying to keep people's vehicles running and that's just how it is. Any other way you like to cut it or talk crap about people, uh, you're just blowing smoke up people's asses because you're trying to make yourself feel good. We're all techs and we all do this together and we all should respect each other regardless of where they came from. Sometimes the dealer techs do have the upper hand because of the tools that we have, the resources that we have and the amount of times that we've seen a problem 
where independent techs have not. But then at the same time, that leaves us at a disadvantage because they get to see more of a variety and we don't. But I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in becoming proficient and professing and specializing in something. And that's what I do here. So let's get the parts coming for the customer if they should choose to do the repair. And uh, we will be back with an update when everything comes in. I thank you guys for your time. Be blessed as always. Have a blessed day.